if you are just moving from isocratic separation mode to gradient separation mode during your HPLC method development, one of the observations you make when you examine a chromatogram is that the gradient baseline often is not flat. How many of you have noticed this one point that there is a lot of drift you are finding when you move from the isocratic separation to a gradient separation? So can anything be done to correct for baseline drift in gradient separation is the very important question you need to answer. So this video will try to explain the major reasons for the gradient drift or presence of ghost peak and how one can avoid such kind of ghost peaks or the drift due to a gradient. Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to get absolute clarity on various technical aspects with the help of proven system. So if you are struggling with technical aspects or you are struggling with your career growth and would like to unleash your true potential, join the Pharma Growth Hub today. To know more about the services of the Pharma Growth Hub, join the WhatsApp group of the Pharma Growth Hub by using the link given in the description. So let us begin with the presentation. I hope you all can see the screen. So before we move on to the reason behind ghost peak, the reason behind drift in the baseline, let us first understand what is meant by isocratic mode and what is meant by gradient mode. So isocratic mode is the something in case if the same composition of mobile phase is used throughout the entire run. So for example, if your runtime is 10 minutes, you are performing the paracetamol assay and the composition of your mobile phase remains 90% water and 10% methanol. This means you are using HPLC in a isocratic mode. The second mode is the gradient mode. So what happens in the gradient mode? The composition of the mobile phase is now not remaining one and the same throughout the entire run, but it gets changes. It gets changes over a period of time and there could be some reason for the change because you need to resolve the critical band pairs. You need to complete analysis in the short run time and this makes isocratic unfit and hence you have developed a gradient mode. An example of the gradient mode, now this is the one. So for zero minute, the, the percentage of uh, mobile phase coming from the channel A is 90% and the percentage of mobile phase uh, coming from the channel B is the 10%. So 90, 10 at zero minutes, 90 plus 10 equals to 100%. So at the 10 minutes, now look at here, your proportion of the A is changing from 90 to 50 percent, right? And the proportionate of mobile phase B is changing from 10 percent to 50 percent. Now this is called as what? Now the composition of the mobile phase is changing. The composition of the mobile phase is changing and this is not a sudden change by the way. It is changing from 0 to 10 minutes. Means over a period of 10 minutes of the time, you are mobile phase coming from channel A or the port A will change from 90% to 50%. Similarly, over a period of 10 minutes of the time, the mobile phase B coming from port B will get changed from 10% to 50%. So what is happening at the end? You are increasing the proportionate of uh, percent B and you are decreasing the proportionate of percent A. In, and in case if the, uh, uh, you know, the mobile phase inside the channel A is just a water or buffer, so, uh, so you are decreasing the quantity of water or buffer, whereas if the mobile phase uh, in the channel B port P is let us say methanol, so what you are doing, you are actually increasing the proportionate, proportionate of methanol over a period of time. In reality, you are making the mobile phase more stronger at 10 minutes. 
more stronger mean salt your percentage of organic solvent is more as compared to the aqueous solvent now this mobile phase is called as a stronger mobile phase and i am speaking in the context of reverse phase chromatography so this is an example of the gradient elution mode the main important question for today's video is why baseline drift and the ghost peak is observed while gradient run now this drift and ghost peak may also observed in the isocratic mode too but they may be more prominent when we shift from isocratic to a gradient the first reason that i would like to explain as a part of this discussion is due to change in absorbance with gradient progression because of what the change in absorbance due to a gradient progression let us say you have two mobile phases right the mobile phase a coming from port a or channel a and mobile phase b coming from port a or channel a uh, port b or channel b in case if the absorbance value of mobile phase a is less than absorbance value of the mobile phase b you just take the absorbance values of the mobile phase a and b and if you found that okay the absorbance value of mobile phase a is actually less than the absorbance value of mobile phase b so what kind of chromatogram you can expect and you can expect the chromatogram just looks like this okay now here you can see that the absorbance now this is the chromatogram uh, where the uh, time versus absorbance or the response uh, in case of your hplc system so as the time progresses what we are seeing over here the absorbance is getting increased why the absorbance is getting increased because the proportionate of mobile phase b is also getting increased and as the mobile phase b has the high absorbance value and if the composition of mobile phase be getting increased what do you expect you also expect that the absorbance value will also get increase with proportionate to the increment in the portion b inside the mobile phase i hope you understand why the chromatograms will just look like this in the second scenario you can say okay if the absorbance of mobile phase e is greater than the absorbance of mobile phase b so your mobile phase a has a greater absorbance value as compared to the mobile phase b and what kind of uh, chromatogram or baseline you can expect you can expect this kind of uh, the the chromatogram here now you can see that there is a decrease in the absorbance value so in this case the drift is towards the negative side once your system makes the auto zero right that's the way the hplc works they makes the auto zero and then the proportionate of b is actually increasing but what is the absorbance of the the b the mobile phase b have the lower absorbance value so the further as the proportionate of mobile phase b gets increasing the mobile phase composition will have the lesser and lesser and lesser absorbance value and you will see that now your baseline is shifting towards the negative side or the negative drift so there could be two different scenarios the first one in case if the absorbance of mobile phase is less than absorbance of mobile phase b you will see the positive drift and in case if the absorbance of mobile phase a is greater than the absorbance of mobile phase b you will see the negative drift now having understood these two different scenarios and reason behind that now what could be the uh, mitigation that you can think to uh, you know come out of this one challenge and this could be this one in case if the absorbance of mobile phase a is just equal to absorbance of mobile phase mobile phase b so whatever may be the composition of a and b throughout the entire chromatographic run will the absorbance value change it will not because it is not about the presence of mobile phase a or b anymore whatever may be the part of your mobile phase composition you know that both the mobile phase is coming with the same absorbance value and you can expect now the smooth baseline you can expect the smooth baseline so what you have to do first in case if you are not measuring the absorbance value so please measure the absorbance value of your different pores of the mobile phase and then if you need to manage the absorbance values uh, then you can do that you increase the absorbance value of the mobile phase which contain the lower absorbance value and this can be done 
uh, very often by adding the buffer in mobile phase A. See, most of the times you will have this kind of scenarios where there is a positive drip. So in case of positive drip, you can in that what that indicates that indicates that the absorbance value of mobile phase is low. So increase the absorbance value of mobile phase A and match it equal to the mobile phase B just by adding the buffer solution. Now in case if there is a second scenario where mobile phase A has the greater absorbance value as compared to mobile phase B, you can think of adding the another organic solvent which has the higher amount of absorbance value. So that way you can match the absorbance value of mobile phase A and mobile phase B. Having said that, you should not cross the absorbance value of either which crossing the, the UV cutoff should not be greater than 0.5 absorbance unit altogether. Or if not 0.5, don't go beyond point, uh, don't go beyond one absorbance unit. The second reason could be if the mobile phase has a high absorbance at the working wavelength. Right? Now I have another suggestion for the uh, for you to consider. I just forgot to mention about that. And here it is now in case if the mobile phase A has the greater absorbance value than mobile phase B. Is it because of the salt that you are using? Because carbonate salt, acetate salt, they result into high absorbance values. Either you can replace those carbonate or acetate salt by the phosphate salt which has the very low UV cutoff absorbance value. Or you can just use water as a mobile phase A in case if there is no need to control the pH. But in case if you need to have the acetate buffer for some reason, right? You need to have an acetate buffer in mobile phase A. What you can do is you can also add some amount of acetate buffer into mobile phase B. Now mobile phase B containing ACN which has a lower absorbance value, I am talking about the scenario number 2. So in case if you add now the acetate buffer in the mobile phase B with certain amount of water if required to get your acetate salt well solubilized, what you can expect? You can expect now because of addition of salt or buffer, the absorbance value of mobile phase B will also get increased. So this way you can make the absorbance value of mobile phase A and mobile phase B now close to each other and hence you can expect now the smoother baseline. So let us go back to the, the, uh, the second reason why you, could, why you could see a drip in a mobile phase during a gradient run. So if the mobile phase has a high absorbance at the working wavelength, it is also noted that in case if your salt, if your organic modifier has the higher UV cutoff, you can also end up getting the lot of baseline dripped. So this is the example where your measurement wavelength is 210 nanometer, right? And you can see that, you know, this is the wavelength versus absorbance uh, figure and you will see, okay, there is a lot of absorbance coming at 210 nanometer. But is it really required for you to work at 210 nanometer? If not, can you change the uh, wavelength at what? Where there is a minimum or no absorbance coming out. So if you look at the wavelength to 40 nanometer, you can see, okay, now there is a less amount of absorbance value. And with this change, you can certainly going to make a baseline more and more smoother. The third reason that you are getting a drip in the baseline, if the solvent have impurities in them. Now, this is not about the, uh, the drip. I'm so sorry, but this point can brings you a lot of ghost peak, unwanted peaks during your chromatographic run. And this is because of what? The solvent and especially the water containing a lot of impurities. So look at the TOC level of the water. Look at the conductivity level of the water. I think you should have a water uh, with the less than 10 to 20 ppb total organic carbon in case if you are using the water for UPLC analysis. And the conductivity can be think less than 1.3 micro cements. So in case if you do not have this quality of your water, maybe this is the time you need to look for the better source for the water. And same is the case applicable for the organic solvent too. So they must be the, the, the ultra pure or the good quality organic solvent. And same is the case applicable for the salt or the buffer salt you are using. So this is the 
the chromatogram where you can see a lot many ghost peaks. So how you can mitigate, minimize those ghost peaks? I have seen people using the ghost buster column. So they call this column as a ghost buster. Now this column busts all the ghost peaks because of the impurities observed in the mobile phase. This column absorbs the or adsorbs these impurities, metal ions coming from the mobile phase. And because of that, you can see a much smoother baseline. You can see the another baseline now where the ghost buster column is used, right? This one. So I have found that the ghost buster column really works like a magic. So you can try out this, but make sure that this column is not recommended in case if your mobile phase consists of ammonia related or uh, compounds. So use either ghost buster column or in case if you can use the high pure grade solvent. And in case if you can, you are not filtering the mobile phase earlier. Now this could become the reason for the ghost peaks. Consider filtering the mobile phase maybe by using 0.2 micron filter paper. Also understand whether the mobile phase filter paper is really uh, suitable one in, in terms of its uh, compatibility with the constituents of the mobile phase. Either you use the ghost buster column, right? Either you use the high purity grade solvent, water, organic solvent and salt. And in case if you are not filtering the mobile phase for some reason, I do not know why but then consider filtering the mobile phase with a compatible filter paper. The another reason that you can find the ghost peak especially because of the some organic modifiers like uh, trifluoroacetic uh, acid or triethyl amine or the carbonate buffers. Now this uh, modifiers, in case if you are not using the uh, mobile phase uh, immediately, it found that they generate lot many ghost peaks as they are unstable and hence it is recommended that you validate your method for the stability of your mobile phase within which time frame your mobile phase can be stable and you will find that now with the fresh mobile phase the baseline is much much smoother there is no ghost, peak, ghost peaks coming out and in case if you do not want to use the mobile phase for shorter time consider replacing TFA, TE or carbonate buffer with the suitable one. Either you replace these modifiers or buffer salt by the suitable one and then probably you will come out, come out of this ghost peaks. But in case if the TFA is the requirement, then consider conducting a the usage period for your mobile phase. I hope you will find this information really helpful because this is something which is very, very challenging most of the times. Thank you so much.